connected and we're really thrilled to be hosting this webinar this afternoon. Um, Robert, my colleague Robert Davis is here as well. He's doing all the techie stuff today as, with me as well. So um, we, this, this webinar uh, is an hour and, and a half. So we've got about 30 minutes for questions at the end. So if you could put any questions as we're going through the presentation in the chat, then we'll be picking them up to ask the questions at the end. And uh, if you could put a queue in front of the questions, that would be really, really helpful so that we can we can pick up the questions and identify them. Um, and I'm just really delighted to be introducing you to our speaker today for this Tiny Happy People webinar, Mark Raskstraw. He's an assistant producer on the Tiny Happy People campaign. He manages the champions training for organisations, professionals, volunteers within the early, sec early year sector across the UK. And he leads on many live face-to-face -face events across the country. And he also sits on across many of the physical and digital resources produced by the Tiny Happy People team, um, amongst other duties, he says. So he might tell us about his other duties as well. So I'm sure you all know a bit about the Tiny Happy People initiative, which is all about aiming to reduce the word gap by supporting parents to help develop their young children's vocabulary in the home learning environment. And for us, the public libraries and the role public libraries play in supporting the home learning environment is really, really crucial. So based on extensive academic re and audience research, Tiny Happy People has a simple message at its heart to talk to your baby as much as possible from birth. And so on that note, I think I shall hand over to Mark, who will take us through the Tiny Happy People uh, program. Thanks for those who are sharing ideas for improving the sound. Um, as I said, we, we will record it anyway. So if you've got real problems, we'll make sure you get a copy of the, 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 the sound. But um, uh, we'll just hand over to Mark and he'll take us through the program. Lovely. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you to all of you that have uh, joined us this afternoon. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, we know absolutely how busy everybody is, uh, and we know that finding the time can sometimes be uh, quite difficult to do. So I just want to check. Um, I seem to have lost all my images at the moment, but um, I'm hoping I'm going to get a thumbs up um, that you are seeing the Tiny Happy People logo. Yeah. Um, Fantastic, brilliant. I can see none of you now, um, mm -hmm. but uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of Zoom. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on. Uh, so firstly, thank you all for joining us. Um, and as Sarah said, uh, my name is uh, Mark Rackstraw and I'm the assistant producer for Tiny Happy People. Um, one of those other duties that I do is um, after the champions training, uh, I will be sending you a PDF uh, or I will be sending to Sarah to send to you um, a PDF of today's presentation. Uh, so do feel if you wish to take notes, please do. Um, but do know that uh, the PDF will be winging its way to you um, uh, by the end of this week. OK, we've got a lot to get through, um, so we're going to be covering an awful lot this afternoon. Um, and I do know um, quite often at the end of these presentations, uh, I, I'm quite often met with stunned silence. Um, and then uh, a few days later, uh, the questions come. Hopefully I can uh, deal with any questions that you have uh, today. Uh, as we go through, but I will also be sending you my email address um, so that if you have any questions as they come up, uh, as you start to use our resources, etc., um, I'll be here uh, for you to, to ask those. So let's have a quick overview, uh, have a look at what we're going to be looking at this afternoon. So uh, very importantly, we're going to have a look at what is the Tiny Happy People campaign. We'll explain what the campaign is uh, and why we exist. Um, we'll also explain what it is that we offer and also um, how we are delivering it. Then we'll get on to collaborations. And this is where we are looking to the libraries across the country to collaborate with us uh, on this project. And we'll hear from uh, Janet Cooper um, and she, she'll be sharing her experience as a speech and language therapist uh, of collaborating with Tiny Happy People and how this helps with the families that she supports uh, in Stoke. At that point, after we've heard from Janet, I will actually stop the presentation. Uh, and what we'll do is we will go live to the website this afternoon. So exactly as the website is this afternoon. 
And I'll take you on a tour of that website. Some of you may well have already had a look at the website and had a, had a feel around. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go in a little bit more detail and open up some doors that you may not have opened um, and hopefully uh, share um, some resources with you that you will find useful uh, in your day to day work with families. And then um, we'll come back to the presentation. Uh, we'll touch upon all the, the physical and digital resources that are available for you on the website. And we'll have a, a quick look at that. But when we come back, we'll come back to the presentation and we'll delve a little bit deeper into those uh, physical resources that are available for you to use immediately. And then, as I said, I'll be sending you my email address um uh, so that if you have any questions you'll be able to uh, send them through to me i am often doing champions training or i'm often on the road um doing one of our face-to-face -face events so sometimes emailing me may not be the most efficient way to get an answer uh, you will get one just might take a little bit longer um, but we'll look at other ways that you might be able to get uh, quicker responses to any of the questions that you may have okay so what is Tiny Happy People? Well, it's an ongoing BBC initiative that aims to tackle the UK's word gap by helping parents and carers prioritise their child's speech and language development from pregnancy and really importantly, in the home learning environment. Now, as most of you know, uh, the word gap is the difference in the size of vocabulary in children when they start school. Now, it's significant because if a child's vocabulary is not at the expected level, they are already behind their classmates. And once a child starts behind, they stay behind. As the word gap, once it's been established, can be difficult to close. But although the word gap can be difficult to close once it appears, it can be prevented relatively easily by parents and carers using simple, effective techniques with their child in their early years before starting school. And this is where Tiny Happy People comes in. It's a major part of the BBC education strategy to help improve social mobility and is targeted at all parents, carers across the UK with a particular focus on families who are more in need of support. Our purpose and ambition is to help reduce the number of children starting primary school across the UK without the expected levels of communication and language skills. Now, obviously, we can't do this alone. So Tony Happy People is a collaborative oh, initiative. I'm sorry, was that me? OK, uh, so Tiny Happy People is a collaborative initiative and our aim is to work hand in hand with like minded organisations, frontline professionals and volunteers to collaborate and help reduce the UK's word gap. And in particular, to give children from a disadvantaged background the best start in life. You can see you there. Right. Which is great. <laughs> But it's just um Wait, can I just get everyone to turn their, yeah, it's their microphones, please? Okay, so now based on extensive academic research, tiny happy people has a simple message at its heart. Talk to your baby from as early as possible, including pregnancy. Tiny happy people is here to show you how and what. No, it's, it's like a system thing, it's as if. There's no speakers plugged in. So in a nutshell... I'm not on mute at the moment, am I? I need to try mute. Why do I mute myself, Michelle? Well, just... There we go. So in a, in a nutshell, this is what Tiny Happy People is about. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you a film uh, that we often share with parents and carers and professionals and volunteers as well to give you just a bit of a flavour of... Um, tiny happy people so hopefully uh, we've got sound and everything and uh, i'll just give this this film a play <laughs> bbc tiny happy people is packed full of information on how you can develop your child's language and communication skills so they get the best start in life there's your tongue there's your tongue 
Here's a quick guide on how to find your way around the site so you can make the most of it. Tiny Happy People is a great resource tool. It supports parents and it gives them the support in a fun way. <laughs> you could start by looking at how your baby develops their communication skills. Thank you. Are you joking? Are you joking, you? Hey, yeah. Find out how easy it is to help your child's development by taking turns. Daddy's turn. Following your baby's lead. <coughs> and singing songs. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Discover how everyday activities can help your child develop their language. After the cardigan we put on your socks. After the socks we put on your and shoes. Give me five. It's easier than you think to build them into your day. Socks. Yes, they're my socks. All the ideas and activities are based on expert advice and evidence, so you can trust that it really helps. And you can have a go at bonding with your child even before they're born. You're going to talk to him. Oh. Say, I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait. I love you. <laughs> Find out all about your child's brain development with our science and facts. The quarter of all the energy our body uses is spent on keeping our brains running. For babies, though, it's double that. There's stuff for mums and stuff for dads. You can also follow us on Instagram for daily tips and advice. So remember, your words build their world. So let's get building. So just a little snapshot of what Tiny Happy People is and what we have to offer. And this afternoon, we're going to dig just a little bit deeper than that as we go through. But just quickly, what is there that we can offer? Well, the Tiny Happy People website is completely free to use. It has a huge library of evidence-based resources that focus on techniques which are proven to have a positive impact on the speak and speech and language development of naught to four-year-olds. The website itself has over 1,300 films and articles, and the type of content includes, well, one of the main reasons people come to our site, and that's for those activities that are all categorized by age, which I'm hoping that you're going to get a lot of use out of, as well as lots of tips and advice for parents. Being the BBC, we have access um, to some of the nation's leading experts, and we can take that advice and pass, pass it on to parents. We've also got um, the child development, the science behind all of this. We've also got a large selection of special needs and disabilities content. Um, as well as um, dad and just recently added uh, grandparent content as well. I have to stress that Tiny Happy People website is parent facing. The whole site has been built for parents to use. But where we look to professionals and volunteers is to understand the site and recommend it to parents and carers to use. So that's why sometimes you'll look at it and think, well, it doesn't quite feel for me. It's actually designed uh, for the parent or the carer to use. So now we can ensure that all the content we produce has been developed and quality assured by frontline professionals and academics working in the fields of speech language, early years and frontline health services. So we feel confident knowing professionals, volunteers, parents, carers can trust tiny happy people content. And here are some of the organisations we've been working with over the last few years who help shape our offering and help raise awareness of the content. And you can see we've been working with important groups like the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists, uh, obviously the Institute uh, of Health Visiting, and of course the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities. You'll also find BBC Tiny Happy People on Instagram and Facebook with a combined support of over 300,000 followers to date. Now, social channels allow us to be really reactive and connect directly with parents. Uh, the social, for instance, the social team recently gathered the most frequently asked questions from our followers and have held Facebook and Instagram Q&A live events where parents and carers could put their questions to experts. Now, we've done this with special um, speech and language therapists and health visitors in collaboration with uh, the Institute of Health Visitors and Speech and Language UK, amongst others. 
Okay, so we've spoken about what the Tiny Happy People Initiative is and how we create our content. So let's move on to now how we deliver the campaign. So we have a five pillar delivery model incorporating content platforms and frontline outreach, which is where you come in. First, we have digital, which is our website and socials that we've just touched upon. Then we have, uh, unsurprisingly for the BBC, uh, we have broadcast and we work with teams across the BBC, uh, such as BBC Breakfast, Radio 2, uh, BBC Five Live, as well as local uh, stations like Radio Cornwall and Radio Ulster uh, to promote our content. And then our third and probably one of our most important uh, strands, and this is where you come in, is our frontline professional engagement. Now, this is absolutely vital to Tiny Happy People's success. Now, we are experts in content making, but not speech language early years and health. So we collaborate with academics, professionals and organisations such as yourself who operate in these fields to help spread campaign awareness. We also work with local authorities uh, who integrate tiny happy people into speech and language pathways and also have local key champions who might be SLTs, health visitors, midwife uh, and early years practitioners who recommend our resources to the families that they work with. Our fourth delivery pillar, and again this is where you come in, is community activation such as charities, third sector organisation and community groups who use and share our resources. So as well as working with the likes of Greater Manchester Combined Authority, we work with organisations such as Homestart UK, Flying Start Wales and, and Rangers Football Club in, in Scotland. And then finally, um, our business engagement. And this is our most recently launched pillar. Uh, we're currently looking to partner with local and UK wide businesses to reach their customers and workforce to help support them with the free Tiny Happy People resources. Alongside all the delivery pillars, we use high profile supporters who resonate with our audience and believe in the campaign to help get the message out there about the importance of speech, language and communication. Now, these supporters have really helped us connect with 16 to 34 year old parents who spend who are predominantly are on Instagram and Facebook and other social media platforms. And it really helps to bring them to the Tiny Happy People website. We have the support of the Princess of Wales and the Royal Foundation, who talks on behalf of the campaign during an exclusive BBC Breakfast interview when we officially launched on July the 14th, 2020. So why are we asking you to collaborate? Well, I think the main reason is because we all want the best start in life for the families that we support. And as we know, intervention at an early age by asking parents, carers to talk to their baby from pregnancy can really improve a child's prospects. So what's available to you to help pass this message on? Well, as we discussed, we've got that free video content. There's over 1,300 videos on the website. And I'm going to show you how you can share those very, very easily. Uh, we make sure that all of our video content represents all parents from a wide range of backgrounds. You won't find um, actors and actresses in our films. You'll find real people in real homes. We haven't got sets. These are real people in real homes that other people uh, can easily identify. And they are modeling the best practice. So we make sure that the, the best practice is being modeled by people that are relatable uh, to our audience. The other thing is we make sure that all of our activities fit into a parent's routine. When we look at the, the activities a little bit later on, you will notice that none of our activities go over two minutes. We know that uh, parents, carers, professionals are time poor. Nobody's got time to sit down and watch a 30 minute film on how to do an activities. We have a mantra, one minute, one message and we most of our films are between a minute and two minutes long um, so that they're really easy to digest you should be able to relate to the people in the films um, and the message should be very clear and hopefully you'll see that as we go through 
We've also got those free digital resources um, and they're all on our website. And I'm gonna show you how you can share those really, really easily uh, with the groups that you uh, work with. Uh, and then we've got those physical resources. Uh, now, I would love to be able to say to you that we can send everybody physical resources. It would be bigger than our budget. Uh, so we are unable to do that. However, we've done the hard work. We've created uh, these resources. So we've done all the, the expensive design work, et cetera. And these resources are sitting on the website for you to download and to print. Uh, there are, And we can send you some samples as well, but we'll look at that. Uh, as we go through. But physical resources are there and we will come back um, to my presentation later on to have a, a deeper delve uh, into those physical resources available. And then, as, as I say, we've got those experts right across the, the country. So they are there with articles and information for you that you can easily share with parents if, if there is a particular situation uh, that, that you might need uh, an expert advice on. The important thing to remember is pretty much um, everything you see on the website is evidence-based content. It's content that you uh, can trust. Okay, so now you've been listening to me for a while. Uh, so I now think is a good time to hear from professionals uh, who are using tiny happy people on a daily basis. I think they offer some good insights on how easily tiny happy people could be integrated into your day to day work. So let's hear from the teams. I'm Janet Cooper. I'm a clinical lead speech and language therapist. My role is to make sure that all the children who come to our service get the best outcomes. Tiny Happy People is fantastic in the fact that it can support all the things that we do. It gives things for families to try at home, it gives practitioners something physical to hand over to families for them to practice beyond the sessions that we have. And it also sometimes prevents referrals as well, because if people can support themselves at home, often they don't need the advice of a professional. My name's Farah Aziz and I'm a speech and language therapy assistant practitioner. We are using Tiny Happy People right from the start and then obviously throughout our weekly sessions it's tailored for parents which is fantastic. We always signpost parents to BBC Tiny Happy People because the aim of the sessions really are to focus on building parents' confidence. If parents are obviously seeing other parents actually you know, carrying out the activities that we're modelling to them, they are more likely to then carry those out. And the BBC Tiny Happy People does that, and that's our aim. During the training, we can sign post practitioners to specific clips. And what's brilliant about those is they're so short and succinct, but really get the message across. What's what that? Fun. Fun. Yeah, right. good boy. It's fantastic because sometimes in my spare time, there might be something on BBC Tiny Happy People, which actually I can kind of take and use in the session. What's great about Tiny Happy People is that within our trust, we've been able to integrate that into the way the services work. So our health visiting team, for example, if a family ring the hub and they've got concerns about speech and language, they will always signpost families to the Tiny Happy People website. So just a, a flavour there of um, how you can integrate uh, Tiny Happy People into your day to day work. And uh, we're currently working um, with the University of Sheffield and uh, they are currently uh, evaluating our project. And some of the interim results have uh, just started to come in. And uh, we really love this quote, the tiny happy people intervention has had a positive effect on parents' use of responsive language and children's communication skills at the age of 12 months. So that's just the first part of the evaluation, but that bodes well uh, for, the, for the rest of the evaluation as well. Okay, as promised, I think now I'm going to stop the presentation and we're gonna now go across uh, to the website as it is this afternoon, um, and we will have a look um, uh, at the website. So to access the website, it is uh, the BBC website, so it's bbc.co.uk forward slash tiny happy people all one word and that should i hope bring up our website so this is the website today as it is this afternoon 
Um, and the first thing you will notice, well, this is called the home page or the landing page. So this is where the majority of people will initially uh, interact uh, with tiny happy people. I'm going to address something now that I'm often asked, uh, which is, is it an app? So uh, it is not an app. Um, we decided that to develop an app uh, costs a lot of money. Um, and we also decided that we'd like to use that really for the content. And we felt that we were getting the best of both worlds uh, by doing it as a desktop site. So we've built it as a desktop site. However, if you open this site on your mobile phone, it acts and works pretty much the same as an app. Only you don't have to install an app. So one of the things that one of the feedbacks we got when we were looking at uh, devising an app is that a lot of parents already have so many apps on their phone that they actually have to delete apps to put apps on. Um, so there was always a chance that they were going to install um, the Tiny Happy People app. However, as a web page, it's there. All you've got to do is mark it in the favorites and it's always there. So I just wanted to address that straight away um, so that it's parent facing. It's not an app, but it will behave like an app within the telephone. Uh, sorry, within the mobile phone, oh, old school. So now going back to the actual landing page, um, we're going to look at these three main areas because these are the heart of tiny happy people. And we'll look at these three core areas in just a moment. But while we're on the landing page, we'll quickly have a quick look at that. So the first thing you will notice is directly below the three core areas is three things we love. Now, this changes literally on a weekly basis. We try and keep it topical. And if any of you saw the uh, Rose uh, Ailing Ellis uh, documentary last night, uh, we have an article uh, from Rose uh, this morning uh, on our site. And it's also doing very well on the homepage, uh, the BBC homepage. We're always pleased when that happens. Um, and so you'll see that anything new will be in here. And this changes literally on a weekly basis. It's a, a week to week change. So it's a good place to come to look if you're looking for some new content. Directly below that, this changes on a monthly basis. And again, we try to uh, link it to something that could, you know, the, a theme of the month. Uh, and this month, it's all about the power of play. Um, so we put a lot of uh, resources there, some content there. And this will change every month. So you've got your weekly change and your monthly change. We then make sure that there are really clear for parents and carers the various areas that we have in the website. Uh, so it's nice and easy for them uh, to find those uh, websites. Uh, one thing I will mention, and again, I'm going to address this early as it's a question we're asked a lot, um, bilingualism. Um, what other languages apart from English uh, is the Tiny Happy People website in? I have to tell you right now, it's English and we do have Welsh as well. I did notice there were some Welsh libraries uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. So we do have some um, Welsh uh, content, um, uh, all in, uh, written in Welsh. Um, some of the films are still in English. However, within here, this area here, all of the films are in Welsh, as well as the articles around them. So we do have some Welsh language, but in terms of bi uh, bilingual, um, I'm afraid that's pretty much it. Now, we do know um, that there is demand uh, for other languages, and it is something that we are undertaking at the moment. So we are looking at all the languages spoken across the UK, and we're trying to sort of come up, it's ne never easy, uh, but we're trying to come up with the top five. Uh, and we are looking um, to translate a lot of our articles into those top five languages. Now, I am fully aware once we've chosen those top five languages, we're not going to please everybody. Uh, but we feel it's the right step to take. Obviously, there's, there's a huge cost to this. So we have to make sure that we're spending your money uh, correctly. Uh, so we're making sure, um, checking out those languages, which are the most useful languages. But at the moment, it, it is, and I hope that we will have an announcement on that towards uh, the autumn of this year is when we are looking. That groundwork is going on uh, as we speak. Um, but um, there is a well section, as I mentioned here. 
So still staying on um, the home page, the landing page, you will see those are the activities. We know that's why most parents and carers are coming to our site is for those activities. So we make sure they are available everywhere you go. Um, and then at the bottom, we generally have an onward journey uh, as well. Um, and in this instance, the onward journey is to our colleagues uh, across the BBC. But it's not always uh, across the BBC. Quite often we will link externally as well, um, as long as the onward journey uh, uh, it's appropriate for the onward journey. So that's the landing page, the home page, if you like, um, for Tiny Happy People. Hopefully just a quick uh, explanation of how that page is set up. All right, let's delve into one of the main reasons parents come to us. It's the activities. And we hope that these will also give you inspiration um, for activities that you may want to run uh, in your libraries, if you have stay in plays, etc. Uh, that there are activities there that you may want to incorporate into your um, stay and plays. So uh, let's just take uh, at random any of these activity sections and let's just go in the middle here for nine to 12 months. Now, the first thing you will see um, is that we have uh, grouped the activities uh, into themes. So here we have fun at mealtimes, outdoor and active fun, it's June, July. Uh, this one's really, really important to us. You'll find this in every single section that you go into. And that is all day chat. Just making this part of your daily, everyday routine very very important all day chat playtime games now as you can see we don't have one or two activities we have loads uh, for the families uh, to do so let's say now for instance um you have a let's say looking at laundry with baby so again remember um in terms of your mobile working as an app or on your desktop there is nothing to download everything plays directly on the website or on your phone. So if I click onto this now, it should take me straight to the film and it should then be ready to play. So let's say we put this on here and we watch it and we go, actually, I've got a family. Should we this see what's dry on the washing line? Perfect for. Should we see? Yes, we start with this one. So I'm just going to mute him here Come for on. a second. So first thing you'll notice is that we've not got um, some fantastic set uh, out in Elstree. Um, these are just people's homes. These are ordinary people, in uh, very relatable people in relatable homes. Um, you'll notice also um, that this film runs for one minute and 30 seconds. So everything that you need is in that one minute and 30 seconds. There's also plenty of um, uh, text around it. So if you want to delve deeper uh, than than the film you can there's plenty there that sort of really helps um, uh, tease out all of the things uh, that are within within that particular film so let's say you've got this and you, you have the perfect family uh, you would like to share it with uh, it really is very easy all you do is you come to the top looking at laundry and there's the title and directly under there you will see that we have created these share buttons now, if you want to share this uh, on Twitter or on Facebook or on Messenger or even within a WhatsApp group uh, that you may have, it couldn't be simpler. You just click on here and the link is all ready and you can just send it through your Facebook or your WhatsApp or, or Twitter. Equally, if you want to put, uh, put this into uh, uh, an email, um, you can just copy the link here and paste that into uh, an email or, or a newsletter that's going out digitally. So it really, really is very, very easy uh, to share the content with the families that you're working with. So I'll just go back here. So that just gives you some, some idea, all day chat, playtime games, all of these activities, boogie time, uh, all of these activities should be less than two minutes. And uh, I haven't checked them all, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it uh yeah you go one minute 13. so uh all all activities and again ordinary uh families in ordinary homes there is nothing oh, dressed up it's just very very straightforward and also to share it it doesn't matter where you are that share button is always there it's click that share button and now you can share it with any uh, uh platform uh, that you work with so now, I'm going to contradict myself slightly here. Um, 
insofar as I've said that all of these films are between a minute and two minutes in length, and that is correct. However, at the very top of each section, we have this area called Tools for Talking. And these are also all the films that have been translated into Welsh as well, because we think these are really, really important. So what the Tools for Talking film does is it looks at uh, all of the activities below and it kind of breaks them down and, and gives you sort of the science behind it, why it works, how it's working and how best to do those activities. So it sort of gives you a really good explainer, explainer for all of the activities below. Now, these ones can be a bit longer. Uh, and I think this one may be as long as three minutes. I'm not sure, but I'll double check. Uh, let's have a look. How long is this one? So this one is, well, actually, this is still up to 30, but some of them do go up to uh, three minutes. Um, they tend to be a little bit longer, but really worth the uh, time put in because it gives a much clearer understanding of why these are so effective and proven uh, to, to work. So that's your nine to 12 months. Now, I didn't choose 9 to 12 months because it's one we've got the most of. It really doesn't matter which age group we pick. You'll see we've got just as much activities. The other thing you'll also notice uh, straight away is that we've broken these down into real bite size. Uh, we make sure that all of the age groups is absolutely age appropriate. We know that there's a lot of difference between two months and four months. So we don't have a naught to six months. We make sure we break it down so that absolutely really um, appropriate activities for the age of the child. Um, so let's just go a little bit older now, uh, just about to start school and also the end of where Tiny Happy People goes. So we are naught to five. Um, and so this is the end of Tiny Happy People as such. And the children are just about ready to start school. And again, you'll see there's that really important Tools for Talking film right at the top, worth the, worth the extra couple of minutes just to uh, get an understanding of everything below. Because they're about to start school, uh, things are getting slightly more complex now. So we're looking at phonics. Um, we're looking at uh, emotional development, unsurprisingly, for four to five. However, we've still got that all day chat, four to five, all day chat. We can't stress how important it is and how we must all work to make it as easy as possible for parents to incorporate all of this uh, into their everyday uh, routine. Playtime games, building their imaginations, craft is now start. Again, you can see we don't have one or two activities. We absolutely have loads of them uh, that families can, can get involved with. And uh, let's say playing hopscotch. You've got a family and you think it'd be great to send them um, uh, how, you know, how to play hopscotch. Couldn't be easier. It's that share button. Remember, click that share button. Now you can set, share it on Twitter, Facebook, Messenger or WhatsApp. Now, I have been asked this question before, so I'm going to uh, address that now. Um, and that is, I have a family I work with four to five and I don't want to send them just playing hopscotch. I want to send them everything that there is on this. I want them to do everything, uh, all of the activities. Well, you can. It's not as easy um, as sharing one film, but it is still relatively straightforward. I'll show you how. So we are now, I'm just gonna go back to our uh, activity inspiration for all ages, four to five years, we wanna share all of it. So to share this entire page, all you do is you come up to the very top to the address bar. Now, I'm gonna say this, because it should work in most browsers. It doesn't work in every single browser. I must stress this, but 90% of browsers, this will work. All you do is you go up to the address bar, you click it one time in the white area away from the address, and that will then highlight the URL. All you need to do now is copy that URL, and now, if you paste it into your WhatsApp or your email, they will get the whole page of activities. So you can choose single pages, and we've made that easy with a straightforward button. Um, or you can send an entire page just by going to the top, getting that URL and sending it. And remember, when parents open this up on their mobile phone, it will feel just like they're working uh, on an app.
So that's not to five. Um, we know that uh, some of you will also be holding um, uh, uh, clubs, etc., with um, uh, antenatal or pre-birth uh, mums uh, and dads. Um, so that we've got a whole section on on bonding with the bub, uh, the bump, um, pregnancy, well-being, uh, labour. We've also got a large selection uh, of uh, articles for dads uh, as well as mums. Um, so, I mean, mums, we have have the majority, but we're not far off for dads. We've got a lot of content for dads as well. Now, one area that I don't normally go through, but I think will be of particular interest for you and for the families that come into uh, your library, is that we have an absolute data bank of nursery rhymes. Not everybody is born with the innate knowledge of knowing all of these nursery rhymes. So we've got a bank of, earth, of nursery rhymes um, that you can share with parents or you can use uh, within um, one of your play and stay sessions, etc. Uh, and it is within here, to be honest, within the uh, nursery rhymes that we do have some uh, nursery rhymes in other languages as well. So there are a few nursery rhymes that are, that are in another language other than English. It's only a smattering, but they but they are out there. But every uh, pretty much every classic nursery rhyme and some new ones as well are, are within this area here. We've also got this um, Choose Me a Nursery Rhyme, which is a lovely little way of finding uh, a, a particular nursery rhyme. You just answer some questions and it will deliver you uh, a, a nursery rhyme based on, on the answers to your questions. So not an, an area I normally go through, but I think an area that might be very uh, uh, useful uh, for, for libraries. So uh, that's the activities. Um, hopefully I've opened uh, some doors there for you to go and explore and have a look and hopefully incorporate some of those activities within, within the things that you are already doing uh, in libraries. So let's go back to the three main areas. The second area I talked about was what we call the advice area. And this is where we have that access to experts across the UK, and we can uh, offer advice uh, to parents uh, based on them based on that information. We make it really clear uh, to parents what that advice is all about. And obviously, language development is very important. Meal times, newborns. There's the routines, uh, pregnancy, parent well-being, very important. And it's within here. Um, that you will find a, a whole section for mums, uh, as well as a whole section uh, for dads. Uh, the reason I keep talking about dads, we know that when we started uh, looking at setting up the website, we looked to see what was out there. Uh, and we were quite surprised that there was very, very little uh, for dads. So we made a real conscious effort of making sure that I won't say we've got as much content as we have for mums, because we haven't, uh, but it's not far off. Um, so we do have, uh, we really are keen for dads uh, to play their important part in the speech and language development of, of, of children. Uh, it's in here as well that we'll uh, look at our uh, special needs. And I'm going to just uh, go into there now. So um, we have built this area up uh, over the last uh, couple of years, um, looking at different um, speech and language uh, disability needs. Uh, it's not all advice here. Within here are activities as well that have been designed specifically for children with special needs. Um, and you can see uh, we have, again, quite a lot of content here and again an area that I think I hope um, you'll take some time to explore afterwards we do have a lot of special needs uh, content um, we are you know we're expert at making content but as as we say we're not always necessarily the experts in each particular subject so we do make sure that that onward journey uh, are to the people who are the experts uh, in each of those fields and we try and reflect that throughout the website so you know if we do go off to a site that's outside of the BBC there'll be a very specific reason for that uh, and it will be very appropriate um, to the page that we are currently on so that gives you just a, a little flavor of some of the uh, uh, speech and language needs and disabilities content that we have available uh, to you to use um, and then I'm just going to come back up here because another area that I just want to quickly show you um, is an area that can be uh, a, a problematic 
um uh, and again you've probably got parents that you think actually i think this could be useful and that's emotional development now it is an area that is a tricky to talk about um what can be quite difficult subject sometimes and especially for the bbc um the bbc quite often uh, can have a bit of a reputation of being a little bit finger pointy a bit judgmental so we're really keen for that not to be the case and it's really important that it isn't uh, so um we have worked really hard to make these films really accessible one of the things that we have found uh, in this area that really helps um is uh, a little bit of humor can go a long way uh, and we also find that high quality uh, animations uh, really work well uh, in this space as well. And I'll give you uh, just a quick example. You've gone into the shop because your kid wants spaghetti hoops. You pick the one they like and they start screaming, No, Daddy! No, no, no! Do they want the letters, the cartoon ones in the blue tin, the red tin, the ones they once had at Nan's? None of these tins will stop them crying, throwing a massive strap and saying, no, no, no. And everyone is staring and it makes you just want to scream. So I think we've all been there. Um, again, a little bit of humour, um, a little bit, and, and, a, and a high quality animation can go a really long way in telling the story. And again, all of these are within that two minute time frame, so you're not sharing any long film with anybody. And again, uh, let's say, uh, take this one again, if you wanted to share that one, it is just that share button, Twitter, Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, it's that button. And of course, remember, if you want to share everything in emotional development, emotional development in children, you want to share the whole page up to the top. Click that white area of the uh, URL bar copy. And now you're ready to paste that and it will send the whole page. And again, if you get that on your mobile phone, it will be just like you're looking at the films uh, on, an, on an app. So I want to show you that. Um, so those are that's the second area. And again, um, I hope uh, I've opened some doors uh, that you go and explore. One area that I quickly show you to also worth exploring is our brand new grandparents area. Um, we've got a lot of content. Uh, some of you may well be dealing with uh, grandparents that are are become the main carer uh, for the children. So it, there is a wonderful place for a lot of advice for grandparents and also a lot of activities uh, for for grandparents to do uh, uh, with grandchildren and again all with the best modeling and all proven um, to be uh, effective so I just want to quickly show you that grandparents area I can see time is flying on so I shall uh, go back to the third and last section of the website now uh, we it's a slight misnomer uh, the science area and I have to be honest part of the reason that we've done that is it's all part of trying to get dads you know 80 percent of our audience are female uh, so we are assuming that you know 80 percent of our audience are mums uh it's we're keen to get dads across as well so those dads that have visitors we can follow where they go on the website and we notice they seem to be drawn very much to the why am i doing this what, what is what's the science behind it now i'm not saying mums don't say that as well they absolutely want to know the science as well but it does seem a specific thing that dads really seem to go for so we kind of on our front page, on our landing page, home page, we've called this area science, partly to attract the dads in. But when you go into the area, you will see that actually what it's about is it's about the development of the child. So there is a lot of science there. So it's not really a misnomer, but it but there are more things going on here. Uh, it's about reassuring parents that they're not alone. Um, we all know that children develop at different times. I hate the term milestones, but it's universally used and parents are constantly, uh, you know, as, as you would expect, are, are uh, comparing their child against those milestones. So this is all about uh, really reassuring parents, you know, children develop at a different time, not to worry. Everybody's going through the same thing. Lots of parents are going through the same thing. Now, occasionally it may highlight that there is an issue, but on the whole, it's about reassuring parents uh, that they're not alone. So we have uh, three areas for this. We have uh, baby development. Uh, we have uh, toddler development. Uh, and then we also have that uh, all important preschooler 
uh, development. So three distinct areas, uh, three distinct development phases in the first five years of, of, of the child's life. Uh, and again, there is a lot of advice here, not quite so many activities, but lots more advice. And again, anything new will be marked up new, so you can always get uh, to, to, to check out. So that's the science or what we call the area called the science. So the, just now, before we go back to the presentation, I'm just gonna finish off on a couple of things here. And one that's really important for you is this area here, which again, it's on our homepage, on our landing page. And this area here is for volunteers and professionals. Now within here, you will find a lot of our physical resources. Um, and what we've also done, uh, and some of this you may well find useful, um, is we've gone across and looked at all the professions in early years, and then we've looked at our website. And what we've done is um, we've curated an area for each profession so they can find what they're looking for, looking for very quickly and easily, uh, all grouped together. And we've done that for midwives. Uh, we've done it for health visitors. We've done it, and I think this would be the area that would be of most uh, interest. Um, we've done this for early years practitioners. Um, and we've also done it for uh, speech and language therapists. So uh, really distinct areas where we've grouped everything together um, uh, that we think uh, those professionals will need on a day to day basis. And in fact, if we just go into the early years practitioner one, you can see um, there is a lot of detail there. All those nursery rhymes and songs are there. We know you're going to need those. The importance of play, um, language development, et cetera. There's the child development, but specific areas from the child development areas that are really, uh, that are for that area, uh, emotional development, et cetera. Now, really important, help with the two year review. Uh, we've got a lot of help there uh, to help uh, A, with activities and other things that we're gonna look at in a moment. So that just gives you a quick idea of uh, what we've done there in resources for every profession. Below that, you will find that there are lots of uh, things that we put on the website that we think will be of use to you, including all of our posters. Um, so all of our posters are on the website. You can download those and print them right now, including in Welsh. Um, so uh, lots of posters there for, for you to download and use. All of these posters are A3 in size. So if you're lucky enough to have an A3 printer, you're good to go. Um, they will all print in A4 as well, might not have quite the same impact, uh, but they will all print in A4 as well. So lots of posters for you there uh, uh, to, to, to put up um, in your libraries. Um, as well as um, our activity cards, uh, which are extremely popular, and we're going to look at those in uh, details. An area that would be, I think, again, of a particular interest to you is the community group resources. So within it, it's really how to um, do a tiny happy people community event how to do a great stay and play. I know you guys know uh, how to do great stay and plays, but it's always useful to see other people, how, they, how they've come together. Um, and, and also some advice there for how to use our resources uh, uh, within uh, your stay in place. So again, a really uh, a, another area that I would recommend that you, uh, if you have, if you take some time uh, to go and have a look at. We've got our postcards. These were designed initially for the professionals to leave with families when they visited them. Uh, everybody's using them now uh, because they are so useful and we'll look at those in detail. Uh, and then there's our key films. And again, I'm going to Go, go back to the presentation and we'll look at all of these physical resources as well. One last thing uh, before I leave uh, the website, and I know there's a lot, that I've, a lot of information I've just parted, um, and so a lot for you to take in, but I'm going to just show you one last area. And that's this area here. And again, it's a relatively new thing. So we've created these films that were originally designed for uh, GP waiting rooms. We all know that they have screens. Uh, so we've designed these films um, that have no uh, voiceover, no music, uh, no talking, completely silent. Uh, and they're designed to play uh, on a loop on the GP's um, waiting room screen. And, and a lot of GPs have taken us up on it. We've also had now 100 and I think it's 180 antenatal units across the UK are now showing these films on their screens in their waiting rooms. Um, and we've also found that nurseries have been using these films as well, because quite often they have a big screen uh, and they've never really managed to find a, a use for it within a nursery setting. 
only when they have meetings. Uh, and they found that by putting these films on um, and um, just leaving them running, they really generate um, uh, conversations. They open up conversations with families that, because there's incredible facts. They're very high quality, great quality uh, animations, but with a really interesting fact uh, attached to them. Uh, so we wouldn't normally uh, pass this through, but I do know that some libraries have screens. Um, and again, this could be a, a, a nice addition for, for the content um, for parents that, that come in uh, to the library. So in total, um, we have got six, whoops, I've gone too far. Let's go back again, uh, there we go, whoops. Sorry about that, let's try again. Films waiting room scripts, there we go. So we have six of these films uh, that are all ready to go. Now the BBC, and what's great about this is, I don't know if you've ever tried to download anything from the BBC, uh, you'll find that it disappears if you're lucky after a year, quite often after 30 days, sometimes seven. Uh, the BBC generally do not allow their content to be downloaded but they have made an exception here. So these you can download and use and put straight onto your screen. Um, and uh, as well as the six individual films, we have made one film with all six films uh, uh, cut together that you can uh, use as a loop. Quite a lot of places just have that on a loop running as well. So I want to point that out to you because I think it's a particular area that may be of interest uh, to some of the libraries uh, uh, across. Uh, across the UK. Okay, so that really is, again, we've delved a little bit deeper um, than, than the, our initial film, um, but literally all I'm doing is opening doors. There are plenty, there's plenty of resources and lots of content uh, for you to explore um, uh, carrying on through uh, the website. So now I'm going to quickly go back uh, to here. And as I said, we're going to have a quick look at those physical resources uh, that, that I mentioned that are available to you. So we have little postcards, little A6 size postcards. Uh, these were designed specifically uh, for the, uh, the midwife, uh, for, for the health visitor, uh, and for the early years worker. Um, and what you'll notice on these cards um, is that uh, we are fully aware of the digital divide. Uh, so we make sure all of the information that a parent or carer needs is on the card. It's all there. Everything they need is on that card, whether it's an activity or a fact, everything they need is on the card. However, if they do have access to the Internet, there is also a QR code on each of the cards that will enhance uh, what they're seeing on the card. So these have proven very popular. Um, and uh, as I say, there's a set of three, uh, one for the midwife, one for the health visitor, and one for the early years worker. But to be honest, lots of people are using these and leaving them with families. And the next uh, uh, cards that we have are probably our most uh, popular cards, and they are our A5 activity cards. Now, we, I have to say, I haven't updated my uh, uh, presentation. These are now a set of 10. Uh, so what used to be uh, four activity cards, double-sided, uh, are now uh, 10. Uh, we've added an extra card. So we've now got 10 activities, five cards, um, and these are classic um, activities for parents to do. You'll recognize most of these. Um, and again, all the information that the parent and carer needs is on the card. Uh, but again, there is a QR code uh, if um, uh, it, for it to be enhanced. The beauty is immediately this presentation is finished. Um, you can print these out. We put them on both. If you've got an A4 printer, we've done them both in black and white and in color. So you can print these on your A4 uh, printer. They'll come out, I've got a piece of paper. They'll come out of your A4 uh, printer like that. With one activity and another activity. All you have to do is fold it in half. And now you've got your two sides uh, of your activity card. Um, it might not be very elegant, but it'd be a great way of testing to see if these activity cards work for you. And then if they do work for you, you might want to look uh, to your local printer to see, you know, whether uh, to have some of them uh, printed up uh, professionally as well. So very popular. Um, so these are now a set of 10, uh, uh, five A5 activity cards. 
we mentioned the, the posters i showed you those on the website the posters are ready for you to download this is by far our most popular poster our tools for talking poster again a real conversation starter um and, and very popular um and again all those posters are on the website uh, and if you've got an a3 color printer you are lucky and you are in business you can start printing but again printing up 20 or 50 posters um from your local uh printer uh, don't quote me on this because everybody charges different prices but i think the last time we had that done it was around about 20 pounds but please don't quote me uh, on, on those prices and then this area here again we designed these very very specifically for professionals to use in the field and again they've proven very popular with everybody really uh, so let's have a look at them uh, what they are is that we know uh, that there are certain touch points where professionals meet uh, with the families um, and in those touch points um, they have key messages that they are trying to get across to the family so here we have uh, the health visitor for their six to eight week check and we know that there are four areas that that health visitor is trying to get across uh, to the family so let's have a look at one of those and that will be responding to baby so again all the information is on the on the uh, resource but if you've got uh, a qr code um, you can enhance it and that is the four um, uh, key messages the health visitor is trying to get across on that six to eight week check so we've done this uh, not just for the health visitor so we've got one for the health visitor we've got one for the midwife for that all important uh, antenatal visit again four key messages that the midwife is trying to get across and finally for the speech and language or early years worker for that all important two-year check again those four key messages um, that uh, the uh, speech and language therapist or, or early years worker is trying to get across okay so now i said to you um we couldn't send all of these out to everybody because we don't we just couldn't afford it however we have put one of everything together and uh, we do have sample packs uh, that we can send out to, to your libraries um so again um when i send you the spread uh, the follow-up email on friday um within there will be a link uh, for you to be able to go and request a sample pack now <laughs> unsurprisingly we haven't got a sample pack for libraries um, but I would have suggested that the early years sample pack is probably uh, the best pack but have a look at the packs it tells you exactly what's in each of them um, and then you can choose which pack you want uh, and then we can send that through and it gives you a chance to see um, how those resources actually work uh, in the field Right, one of the criticisms we get, it's not a bad criticism to have, um, and is that we love tiny happy people, but there's so much on it, we can't find uh, what we're looking for. Well, I, 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 I'm not going to argue, we haven't created a search engine. Again, create the search engine uh, costs a lot of money, and again, we would like to put that actually into the content. However, um, if you use any of um, our, your usual search engine, whoever that might be, um, all of the search engines have indexed every single page and every single video, every single word of the Tiny Happy People uh, website has been indexed by all of the major uh, search engines. So to find anything on our site, just go to your favorite search engine and just remember to do this. Let's say you're looking for weaning. You want something on weaning. Just go to your favorite search engine, type into the search bar. You don't even need BBC, just tiny, happy people and the word weaning. Hit return and 99% of the time it's going to bring up everything that we have on the website with the word weaning in it or whatever other word that you have. And that will work uh, pretty much uh, for all search engines because we are fully uh, have been fully indexed um so don't be shy use your your search, the search engines that you normally use but just remember to put the words tiny happy people at the front equally if you're not comfortable with search engines uh, the other option is uh, we have a spreadsheet that, which is in that uh, area that i showed you for volunteers uh, for professionals and volunteers within there is a spreadsheet that lists every film 
uh, that we have done every article that we have done. And if you know your way around a spreadsheet, then you know you would just go to uh, column B. If you're on a PC, you would type control F or command F if you're on a Mac. Type in the word weaning um, and everything that we have with the word weaning will come up uh, on the uh uh, Excel spreadsheet, um, uh, as well as a link directly to that film. So you can immediately go and check to see if that's the film that you want. So I would say in first instance, just use your search engine as you would normally use a search engine. Just remember to put the words tiny happy people at the beginning. Uh, and then if you're not finding, then come along, download the, the spreadsheet and off you go. So we would be delighted for you all to become tiny happy people champions this afternoon. Uh, and what does that actually mean? Well, we would like you to advocate tiny happy people to colleagues, peers, and like-minded organizations to use tiny happy people's free resources as part of their working uh, practice. What would we like you to do specifically? Well. After this presentation, we would love for you to visit the Tiny Happy People website and to just open up a few more doors and, and explore a bit further some of the doors that hopefully I opened up for you this afternoon. And again, always we want you to support and encourage colleagues and teams to share Tiny Happy People. And then today we would really like you to share at least one Tiny Happy People activity or article uh, with a family. Then I'm going to send you on that a follow-up email at, on Friday. Uh, I will send you a link to sign up for our newsletter and also uh, an option for you to uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Once you've signed up to that newsletter, we will have you down as one of our champions. And that's a monthly newsletter, so you'll get a monthly update. And then finally, um, we don't ask for a, um, a, a review or an evaluation of this particular tra training, although anything you put in the comments, we do share uh, with our senior teams, which is always useful. But what we will do is after approximately th um, three months, we will send to Sarah a feedback form because uh, we really feel that we get the best feedback from you when you've been using our resources for a couple of months. That's when you know the things that are working. And some of the things that may be not working quite so well. So that feedback for us is invaluable. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, uh, we're not strictly. We are not judged on how many eyeballs watch us on a Saturday night because we'd be in deep trouble. We are very much judged on are we making a difference on the ground? And the only people that can tell us that are you so it's so important for us to get that feedback it might take a couple of months but i will send to sarah that form please look out for that um and for you to fill that in and, and just return back to us it shouldn't take longer than 15 minutes if you want to write longer than that we're more than happy but if you just go through it should take around about 15 minutes and so look out for that. It is extremely uh, important uh, for us. That's it uh, for me in terms of Champions Training. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Then I can see you all again. Uh, and I'm going to stop there. And um, I guess at this point, um, I guess I'll hand it over to you, Sarah, just to see, um, has there been any questions that I can answer? There have. <laughs> Thanks so right. much, Mark. That was um that's amazing and keeping going for an hour and it's, it's not not easy and, and uh, so thank you and um, also amazing resources I, I had no idea about the extent of the resources on there so um, yes thank you for taking us through those I really like the idea of the um, the poet the, the choose a nursery rhyme finder thing I think that will be fun to do and I have to say I've used the nursery rhyme myself and it's been really helpful um, so there are quite a few questions about sort of permissions and things. Mm -hmm. So I think I think you've probably covered these, but we just I just want to check. So first of all, are libraries allowed to run events under the uh, Tiny Happy People banner? So uh, yes, we would need to work together, um, but absolutely that will be fine. Um, one of the things that we 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 can even give you um, our logo um uh which is quite unusual for the bbc um but we can give you uh, our logo to use as well to promote 
uh, that event. Um, you will need to sign, uh, unsurprisingly, being the BBC, you will need to sign the form. Um, but once you've signed that form, it would allow you then to use our logo in any marketing material that you may have uh, to put it in. But yes, we actively encourage you um, to use Tiny Happy People as, as a basis for your, your stay and play. And by all means, yes. Use that Thank name. you. And then similarly, can can we use the nursery rhymes in our bounce and rhyme sessions um, as, they, as they stand? Uh, can we share them on our our, our public facing pace, Facebook pages? I think you've probably answered all those. And, and the answer yes to all of that. Yes, is, please. Is the more brilliant. we can get it out there, the better. Wonderful. Thank you. And then, um, and you've shown it. Whereabouts are the promotional posters on the on the face on the on your website? Whereabouts so, do yeah, people so find on, them? On the homepage uh, or the landing page, about three quarters of the way down, there's a box that says volunteers, uh, sorry, professionals and volunteers. And within there, everything you need is is within that area. So that's one area that I would recommend you definitely spend a bit of time uh, uh, looking through because there's a lot of resources there for you. Brilliant. So yes, yes is the answer. You can share the videos on public facing Facebook pages Absolutely. or any other on Twitter and so on, which is br brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, uh, Sorry, then I will I will correct that. Mm. Just the one thing. Uh, obviously, you're sharing links. And that's mm -hmm. absolutely fine. Yeah. The one thing you cannot share on Facebook, and I have to be very clear about that, is those films that I showed you for Doctors Waiting Room. Right. Okay. Because they are actually downloadable films. Uh, we can't allow those to be shared as such. Um, they are specifically to be played on the screens. Right. OK. And uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of libraries that do have those those screens. So I think they will find them incredibly useful, actually. So, yeah, thank you for that. And then um, a couple of couple of people have asked about library specific things. So um, you've got uh, you've got things about going 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 to the supermarket and the home visiting. Have you got any films around going visiting the library on your on your on the site? Yes. Yeah, so what I've done is before because obviously we've got an awful lot of content. So trying to decide what to, to go through and show you today and, and whatnot however what I've done is I've put together a list of links uh, that I think are going to be very specific for libraries um, and again I will include that in my follow-up email on Friday um, so there'll be quite a lot of links for you to go and have a look at where we try to identify things that we think would be very specific for libraries Wonderful. and again if you still can't find what you're looking for then come back to us and you know either we've got it and we just haven't shared it with you or we haven't made it yet in which case you know it will go on our list of things to make yeah and I'm sure we'd be we'd be very happy to welcome you into to, to the libraries there to support that if necessary so that's good and, and about sharing books as well so you've got activities around sharing rhymes are there activities around sharing books on the site as well yes there are yes there are and that was one that I, I almost showed you but I, I moved on so yes yes we have got all about sharing books brilliant thank you that that's great and early on somebody asked about oh well actually I'll tell you about Julie do, I, I don't know Julie Caldwell do you want to talk, just unmute yourself if you if you don't mind and just talk about what you do in Hampshire if she's won't be able to oh she can't unmute julie can't unmute what she said was is um that we've designed posters for, for rhymes of the month and story of the month and every month they link a qr code to tiny the tiny happy people website within that with the activity so that parents can go on really? and explore, explore activities and she said there's been a re positive response from parents and and uh and and the teams themselves so well done for that julie well it's done. a great idea yeah but thank and, you for that and any ideas that you have you know it, there's a large group here uh any ways that you have that you think actually i could really do a job on this with my local i've got good contacts with the local authority good contacts with local health good get in touch with us we'll work with you uh to make that happen so you know if, if you've got these contacts and you want to make this even bigger or, or in, in your local area we're more than keen to work with you. Uh, what you have to say is you probably noticed we launched uh, in July 2020. Uh, so that was during the pandemic. Um, and we were all about being a face to face, getting out there and getting in front of people. Well, of course, for two years, we've been shut away. We haven't really been able to do that. This is the first year we've managed to start getting back out. So we are behind. 
uh, no two ways about it. We are behind and, and we've been dealing with like five or six local authorities almost exclusively. Um, and so this year it's it's all about widening out what we're doing and trying to get that message out across the UK uh, as a whole. So if you come up with ideas and you have ways and you think that you could really make this work in your local area, get in touch with us. We'll work together to make that happen. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. And and somebody asked earlier on, do, does one need a TV licence to access the resources? Uh, the, the simple answer to that is yes, that's that's how it's paid for. Mm. Um, so even even now, the laws have just changed uh, that even if you're just using a digital device, you still need to have a, 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 a TV licence. Uh, mm. And certainly any any screen in life, any screen will need a TV license. I know there are plenty of ways and means around it, but I have to tell you that, that you know, that's what pays for this service. That's why we can offer that for free uh, to everybody. Mm. And somebody just said, but none of the resources are alive. So I, I, suppose, I suppose it's accessing the website. You can access the website, but to, to kind of screen them and stuff, obviously you need to fund it, don't you? So... Uh, sorry, I'm. I'm not, uh, so, do you mean when you say the resources? Do you mean like the physical resources? Yeah. That, 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 that. So they they are basically there for you to download and have printed. Um, we can send you samples of them all, um, but what we can't do is supply everybody uh, with all of that those resources. Uh, they are all live on the website right now. Uh, again, in that um, volunteers professionals area within that area, you will see posters are there, postcards are there all of the physical resources are there for you to download um and you know if you're lucky enough to have a, a in-house a printer uh then um you know you, you're good to go um mm. if not there will be there is a certain cost but at least by ordering the samples pack you can get an idea of which of the samples work for you and which ones don't so right. that you can spend your money sure. in the right way yeah so sarah g do you want to just unmute and, and just explain your explain your question sorry we, we sorry I was just yeah. weighing in on yeah. the tv license thing I know obviously my mark you want to promote everyone getting tv licenses because that's how you're funded but um to my understanding was a tv license you only need if you're watching live tv or using iPlayer which obviously your resources aren't specifically on iPlayer um so for some of our um users who maybe don't have tv licenses actually they're not breaking the law using your resources i just wanted to, to sort of clarify around that i was all... no i think that's right sarah um bear in mind of course that um none of those resources will play outside of the uk um so but the website uh will play um whether you've uh paid for it or not um the website will play but you're absolutely right it's iplayer and a screen um, that has to have a, a, a TV license, a web uh, browser on its own does not. Um, but um, if you go outside of the UK, even though you can call up Tiny Happy People or any of the BBC websites, but you'll find none of the videos uh, will play. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying. Thanks, Sarah, for that. Um, and then uh, the, the, I don't know if you'll know this, Mark, but Somebody asked earlier when we were talking about different languages and so on, and and he's they said, is there any research about children growing up in dual language households if parents speak two languages? How does that affect literacy development? I don't know if there's anything that you know. There has on been the some, site. yeah, there has been some research done. Um, it wasn't by us, but I believe it was done by the NLT, uh, National Literacy Trust. I believe they did uh, uh, some research on that. What we tend to say um is that uh, not necessarily dual language but we do say to people where english isn't their first language do these activities in your own language it really doesn't need to be in english um just do these so like one of the parents could understand what was being said but then translate that into their own language it's about children using language it doesn't have to be english it's it's mm. all about using speech and language yeah thank you and then um, just on the sample packs, are they per library or are they per library authority? That's <laughs> out of the question. <laughs> Good question. Um, uh, I'm going to put my neck on the line here and say it's per library. <laughs> Thank you. And then, um, oh, do we, do we need direct permission from you to use resources at our events and how do we get permission? 
you don't you don't need uh, our permission to use our resources, um, especially if you're printing them up yourself. Um, it would be it's nice to have a note of what's going out there. So it would be nice if you were to do that, just to drop us a line to say we've printed up some of your posters and activity cards and we're using them at this. That's really useful for us to have and know because that also helps us when we go for budgeting when mm. we talk to uh, uh you know next year the, uh, we go through a quite a painful process of getting budgets um so that's one of the things that we could be pushing forward saying you know we need to support uh, uh basically the front line uh and and so that when we can see that you are ordering these items in in quite large numbers on your own, that really helps uh, put uh, grist to the mill uh, in, in in our negotiations for actually increasing our, our physical resources. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and then uh, some, Holly's asked, are, are any of the rhymes accompanied by Makaton or sign language? Okay, uh, it's a bit of a minefield. Um, we uh, some are we have a whole section on Makaton we have a whole section on BSL we also have a section on uh, ASL um, uh, so uh, it, every time we put something out somebody always says we should be doing so, so we we're trying to cover all angles so we do have within that uh, special needs area you'll see that there's quite a lot on Makaton and British Sign Language and stuff in terms of it I know what you're asking me in terms of it accompanying uh, the nursery rhymes um, I will need to check on that to my knowledge I don't think so um, but I will check and, uh, and I'll come back and let you know yeah brilliant thank you um, and then just someone just asked just asked for a clarification about downloading those films onto a library screen would would mm -hmm. they require a tv license to do that Ooh um let me think about it it's a big project it's i would say uh i would say yes but i could be wrong okay. again let me go and find out yeah that's fine we can always yeah. sort of clarify that with later because it's uh yeah just be just be clear some some libraries do have tv licenses yeah. but not all it is in fact and of course it's not every every tv needs a tv license so quite often a tv license will take care of a whole building yeah which especially a library which could have 10 15 20 screens in it just the one license is all, all that's needed yeah brilliant and 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 the other question which i think we'll we're, we're, we're not too bad we've got five minutes but um Sarah has asked, are you happy for us to use your tags in social media when we use and share your resources? And Absolutely. and I yeah, I was, I was going to ask you as well as about acknowledging, is there a is there a standard form of acknowledgement when you know when when you're when libraries are using your resources? Oh um yeah, I mean really the best endorsement for us is a link to our website. Um mm -hmm. so uh, as long as you you're you're putting in a all of our films link to our website, so that's great. And then at the bottom, if you just want to put, you know, uh, bbc.co.uk forward slash tiny happy people, that's always great. Or even just a tiny happy people um, hashtag at tiny happy people for for Twitter and uh, Instagram. Just that that sort of acknowledgement would be is is great. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important, really, as well, isn't it? So, so um, I think that's probably I think that's picked up most of the. Uh, most of them, and apologies if I haven't picked up your question, but I'm conscious of of time and, and not keeping everyone from m moving on. But um, I just wanted to just say a huge thank you to Mark because it's it's uh, yeah dealing with all the questions and and doing the presentation and and showing a website live is uh, <laughs> is is very brave in my my view. So um, I just wanted to say thank you, and I'm I'm really excited just to see the breadth of all all of that resource. And it's um I think it's probably the the best thing for everyone to do is to just go and explore it really and and find out what what they want to use. And I I just want to say Mark as well your spreadsheet. Uh, having the access to that spreadsheet so you can you know to and the links on it to to accessing yep. I think I think will be really really useful um because I think it's sometimes it's just knowing what's what's available isn't it Very so, much so. Yeah. yeah I'll make yeah. sure I'll, I'll put a link to that on that email that would be brilliant 
yeah that would be really brilliant and so we will um we will send send that send that send that link out to everybody um including those who've not been able to join but wanted the recording and obviously we'll, we'll also we'll have a look at whether we can subtitle the recording so apologies we weren't able to put subtitles on on the actual live event today but um yeah so so uh, just to say a, a huge thank you to you mark and 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 to tiny happy people for this event and also to alexandra who i know has been a real, a real support and to robert for keeping everything going and admitting everyone robert and apologies to those of you who had sound issues it's the joy of um the joy of zoom i'm afraid and and local authorities sometimes don't like zoom so apologies for that but anyway yeah have a great rest of the day and mark if you can just hang on for a second of course, and yeah. um we'll we'll just say goodbye to everyone else and thank you for very much and thanks for all your comments which we'll save as well because i think there's lots of sharing going on in the chat so thank you for that too thank you everyone